Verse 9, so I tell you, ask, and God will give to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Yes, everyone who, who asks will receive, and the one who searches will find. And everyone who knocks will have the door open. And it goes on to say that, that even, even a bad father will, knows how to give, give good gifts to his son. But the Heavenly Father knows how and wants to give perfect gifts. But there's an issue of persistence in asking. Now let's go back to what if about prayer. What if, not only did we all pray, but what if we all pray as one? And what if we all pray as one persistently and kept going to God and knocking and seeking and asking? What would happen? I emailed uh, George Robinson this week, who is in our, our Friday morning prayer group about prayer. He, he knows a lot about prayer. And I asked him, I said, hey, what, if you could tell our church one thing about prayer, what would it be? And, he, and it was something to this effect about discipline. You know, you just you have to, to just do it. You have to discipline yourself. He said, it's, it's like going to the gym, you know, to, to work out. You have to, to get into the mode. You have to get into the routine of doing it. With it. And before long, you know, you, you're expanding uh, in a way that you never thought would have been possible. So what if we all pray? What if we all pray together? And what if we pray persistently? What would happen? Well, I'm going to tell you what would happen. I wanna, I'm going to share some scriptures with you. If you can turn to Revelation 5 and verse 8, if you've got your Bible, it's not going to see it on the screen. Okay, so think of this. Heaven and earth... There's an expanse between them that they're separated. And the only network, the only pipeline that we have in communication is the issue of prayer. Okay? Now, there are many times in the Bible when uh, we have seen God's voice break through that expanse to earth and we hear it on the earth. And I was thinking of a few of them. Moses and the burning bush would have been one of them. Um, I was thinking of... Uh, Whenever Jesus is at Jesus' birth, I don't think it was a voice, but it was a proclamation of the angels and, a, and a, you know, definitely a message in the stars with the star of Bethlehem. Uh, there, was, there was that issue. Um, I was thinking of Jesus' baptism where it actually was the voice of the Father saying, this is my son who, with whom I am well pleased. I mean, I mean, God's voice broke through. And then maybe we can even say whenever the Apostle Paul was, was knocked back and blinded, he heard the voice of the Lord. Um, but all of these instances, whenever God's voice from heaven has broken through to the earth, it's all huge stuff. I mean, it's big time, you know, Hollywood, special effects, uh, can't do it justice type stuff. I mean, it's, it's huge, big stuff, burning bush, oh my gosh, bush, burn, oh, come on. You know, I mean, you can't reproduce it, you know. It's amazing. Hollywood special effects type stuff right there. 
Okay, now let's look at another one. What happens in heaven when we pray? 1 John 5 and 14. Look at this scripture. This is the confidence which we have before Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Now, a lot of people don't understand prayer. They think prayer is like just asking for your needs. God, give me this. You know, it's like the heavenly Santa. <laughs> okay? That's not really asking according to God's will. But whenever you understand that and understand what, what that's all about, it takes on a whole new meaning. And to understand that God is a hearer of your prayer. And when your voice comes up through that pipeline, bam, it's on it. I don't know what, what that makes you think of, but that's pretty amazing. Um, I thought of a funny story that reminded me of this uh, a few years back. You guys know I'm a, I'm a huge auto racing fan. And, and a few years back, me and some buddies went to a race at the Texas Motor Speedway. And we got down and got to our seats. And we were pretty close to the track. We had the cheap tickets, which in racing, the cheap tickets are at the front. The expensive ones are at the back so you can see more. So we were down in the cheap seats in the front. And we were there, and the cars were all gridded on the... Um, on the, the front straightaway, and I'm looking around thinking, oh, this is cool, you know, taking it in, the smells, you know, the sounds, and, and I looked there, and I noticed that right in front of us, A.J. Foyt's team was gridded right there in the field, and of course, A.J. Foyt is a legend of auto racing, you know, four-time Indianapolis 500 champion, uh, and just, just uh, you know, a who's who in motorsports. I mean, I've been watching this guy since I was a little, little kid. And he's been around for a long, long time, back before I was even around. Okay? And I'm like, oh my gosh, AG Ford's team. And I was like looking around, there were people standing around, and I looked, and there, 20 feet in front of me, was AJ Ford standing right there. And I'm like, oh, that's him! And I was like telling the guys next to me, and we were getting all excited about it. I know y'all think it's silly, but we, we thought it was cool, you know? And, and I go, hey, let's, let's yell at him, let's call him. And he like kind of somehow hears us over the, the loud noise and he looks around. He kind of gives us this look like, what the, who, who's that, you know? And he kind of goes, thumbs up and turns around and goes back to his business. And we're like, AJ Ford gives the thumbs up, you know? And we were just so excited about that. It's like he heard us. You know, he heard our cry. You know, it's like, yeah, like as if we were something, you know? <laughs> um, but think of this. The creator of earth. The creator of the universe hears you. And whenever you pray, he goes, hmm, what are they saying? I don't know about you, but that blows me flipping away. That is wild. Okay, so he hears you. Here's another thing that happens in heaven. Second Chronicles 7.14 says this, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, there's the hearing part again, okay, and I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. Now we can parse that and talk about what that could possibly mean, but I just simply want to say that, that what this says right here to me and to us is that not only does he hear us, but he is willing to move earth on the behalf of what we say. Heal their land? I mean, we can talk about what that means, but I just simply want to say, this is what we need to get from him. He hears us, and he is willing to move on our behalf because of what we ask. Guys, that blows me away. What happens in heaven when he hears us? Now, here's, here's this brain home. And let's bring it right to where we're at this morning and make it just as practical as we can. Okay? We have a dream. God has a dream to bring people to Himself. And that's what we're going to be about over these next few months uh, is we're utilizing this new tool and we're going to relaunch this church. Is that our dream is to connect people with God who are not having things with Him. And we've got some huge stuff we're going to do. We're going to we're dreaming kind of big here. And it's a good thing. And I want us to do it. But what if... For the next 40 days, if all of us committed to pray, and what if all of us committed to not only pray, but pray as one, and if we committed to do it in a persistent fashion, what would happen? I'll tell you what would happen is he will answer those prayers.